Hey, um, a while back I posted some pictures on the Mando Facebook pages about um, some of the physical battle damage I did here on my on my chest plate for my post imperial build. Um, <clears throat> I got a, more questions than I expected about how I got the uh, the physical damage there and what my process was and stuff. So I figured since I got so many questions, um, I might as well show how I did it. Um, it's very very simple. Uh, really, all you need is a soldering iron and like a handful of random nuts and bolts. Um, I found that a knife with a serrated edge was pretty helpful. Uh, and I'll put a, I'll put a list down um, below. But yeah, I'll just do a quick show and tell of how that works and, and how I do it. And hopefully you find that informative. Okay, so the first step in my process uh, in, involves research. Um, <clears throat> I think of the things that, that I want to to sort of say with the armor, and I look for examples that, of that in real life. Um, so I'll look for, you know, for, for straight up physical damage, like, like a straight hit. Um, I'll look for pictures of like steel plate targets for target shooting. Those are the ha tend to have a really good, um, physical reaction when they're hit by a bullet. So those are a good source of, of reference images for that. Um, in this particular case, I wanted to kind of give off the idea that whoever was wearing this back plate had been sliding on their back. So I've got drawn out here in pencil, you know, just any regular old pencil, this raised area on the bottom of this ridge here, which is where, you know, if you were to slide on your back, a lot of very heavy damage would happen here. Um, and in addition to physical damage up here on the more flat spots, I'll come in and do damage to the paint, but not to the, the physical plate itself. Um, because this raised ridge is where it's, it, most of that is going to take the brunt. So I've drawn out the way I don't want it to look in pencil. I looked up pictures of, um, car, car accidents where one car had, you know, slid into another car, uh, scraped it. So, you know, think of think of things in real life that you've seen before and and how that applies to what you're trying to say uh, with your armor. Um, <clears throat> the main tool you're gonna need for this is just a standard soldering iron. This, I got this one on Amazon. It was part of a kit. It was like 15, 20 bucks, maybe less. It had heat shrink and much other stuff that I knew I was going to use anyway, so I got it. This one happens to have a heat setting. You don't have to have one with a heat setting. I have it turned all the way up. Uh, I'm sure it really doesn't matter that much. Um, keep in mind, if you intend to do any soldering with this thing, you definitely want to get extra tips because this tip will not be fit for soldering after you've done this. Um, you can continue to use it for this purpose, but I definitely would not be soldering anything with it. The other thing I want to say before I start is that Although I'm not a doctor and I can't give you medical advice, I'm pretty sure that breathing in the fumes of melting plastic is not great for you. So I suggest doing this in a well-ventilated space. Uh, you definitely want to have like a fan blowing to, to keep the fumes from just going straight into your brain. Um, I've got them in the garage with the door open. I've got fans. So that's good enough for me. Uh, so here we go. You know, and we can start, you know, this area here. I'll take the soldering iron, and because I've drawn this in pencil beforehand, and I know what, I'm gonna, what I want it to look like, uh, I don't need to do a whole lot of guesswork. I can literally just trace this out with the soldering iron. It's kind of hard because you can't really grip this thing uh, too far down, but yeah. You guys, I mean, it's still got print lines. I haven't finished it all the way, but I'll go ahead and trace this out with the soldering iron. One thing I will mention is... You can do this before you've applied any filler primer or spot putty or what have you. Um, you can do it during, you can do it after. I tend to like to do it during or after because when I first was doing this, I realized that if I did it all before I applied the filler primer, I would lose a lot of those 
really small details that we're going to be seeing here in a minute due to the nature of the filler primer building up layers and literally hiding small details is the entire point of that product um, but I'll go in here once I've outlined it and I'll do you know quick circles because you don't want to sit in one spot for too long you can melt a hole straight through it uh, and it'll just punch right through it's not that hard to do I've done it. I've also burned myself doing that because it goes right through into your hand and it's not fun. Um, and the tip of this thing is great for stuff like that where you want to have like a long sort of directional mark. Um, but again, make sure you don't hold it down too far or too long in one spot because you will, you'll go straight through it. You know, and you can just kind of practice until you get a technique down that you like. Um... I know I said don't hold it down for too long. There are times where, you know, if you want a certain effect, you can do that. For example, if I want to have uh, an effect that kind of looks like a very small but very powerful, you know, object has hit this thing, I can come in on an area that, like right here where these edges come together, I know that it's probably thicker inside there, so this area can take it. And I'll just kind of press down until I see it going in, wiggle it around a little bit, you know, move it, and that's that can give a nice effect right there. This plastic that comes up over the edges as you're melting it, as you're melting it, um, that can be plucked right off after it's dried uh, or solidified. You know, with your fingers or you know a small scraper tool or a knife, or whatever. So I, I always take those little burrs off. But anyway, so I've done all this. Uh, I've, I've got it looking the way I want it to, you know, theoretically. And, you know, let's say if I, if I want this to be a little bit deeper, you know, this is where some other, some other tooling starts to come in. I say tooling, it's kind of a joke. Um, I literally will just use, like, the tip of a Sharpie, you know, to sort of press that in while it's still soft to get some more depth in there. Um, you know, I've used a rounded bolt head before. Really, you can, you know, it's up to your imagination. Do whatever you want. Um, what I do like to do in particular, though, is for these types of marks right here with these long sort of gashes, uh, let's widen this up towards the base a little bit. So, yeah, okay, so... For these long sort of gashes, I like to take a, uh, just a pocket knife um, with a serrated edge and I'll kind of get in there while it's warm and, and sort of just give more implication to that line. And then if, you, if you're doing this after you've, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing this after you've done your filler primer, this makes it really a good opportunity to add some like really fine sort of scrape marks to the ends of these long gash lines and you know if you bring them down to a very fine point and it just adds like a really nice subtle detail which is the you know the kind of stuff that when you do enough of these small types of things it really adds to the overall feel and the authenticity of your of your kit so yeah Play around, practice. You got, I'm sure every single person with a 3D printer has a ton of scrap prints laying around that didn't turn out the way they like, so I tend to practice on that kind of thing. Um, so that's going that way. So if it were to continue in that direction, it would end up about there. And then once it's kind of marked in and it's soft, I'll come back with the knife and I'll sort of scrape it through a little and there's a better example right there we can see it's just that really fine continuation of that scrape and you'll you'll lose a little bit of that when you do um if you if you happen to be using a 2k clear coat you will lose a little bit of that detail but between weathering afterwards and paint chipping and that kind of thing the idea will come across. So, 
that is more or less my process. You know, it's, it's really difficult to sort of pin down an exact method because I kind of just freehand this. Um, but I find that the soldering iron lends itself to a great level of um, minute detail. You can be really fine with it if you really want to. Um, it allows a great degree of control. Um, and the benefit to the way we tend to finish props is that if it screws up, you can just fill it with filler primer and spot putty and nobody will ever know. So, I mean, yeah, this took, what, five minutes and probably twice that long because I'm talking and trying to concentrate at two things at the same time. So this is just a really, really effective way of doing this. Um, I also tend to use black PLA, just, you know, preference. It's, it's cheap, and I just tend to like working with it. Um, so because I use black PLA and the filler primer is gray, what I'll do after I've done this is I'll uh, take a silver Sharpie, and I like to go in here and sort of fill this in because then I can see those details and I can, it gives me an idea of what this is going to look like once I put my chrome layer down or silver or whatever you happen to be using. Um, so that's a nice way of, you know, kind of treating yourself to a preview and going, hey, this is going to look pretty cool or eh, I don't really don't like this. It's too much. Let me cover some of this up with spot putty. Let me reshape that hole. Let me put more of a dent over there, etc. Um, and you can see, you know, if I'm holding this maybe a foot from the camera, it already looks, you know, like real metal, like something had scraped or damaged it. So, oh, let's see. Now that this is cool. Yeah, these pieces of plastic that melted off, they just peel right off. So, you know. The key, I find, you know, this isn't really the point of the video, but I figure I'll mention it. I find that if you're intentional with your with your damage, you have an actual idea, a story in your head as to how it happened, and you uh, plan it beforehand, and it's minimal. Less is more. If you see some of the most um, recognized and celebrated kits in the community tend to be those who uh, have a very minimal approach when it comes to weathering and damage, and that just tends to be in my, you know, in my experience, it tends to look better. It tends to look more realistic. If you look at the examples on the show, you know, you don't see a lot of guys walking around in stuff that looks like it was dragged behind a truck. So less is more, in my opinion. Take it or leave it. That's up to you. Uh, this is how I do my my damaging. I've also used a heat gun to do large areas. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that at some point, but. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions about this or if you've used this process and you may have found a better way or something I could do differently, please let me know. I really enjoy learning new things uh, and trying new skills. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this and, um, you know, I hope it does what you need it to do.